morning and welcome to our Easter morning uh, service. Uh, it's uh, the highest day in the Christian church. Some people say Christmas morning is, but uh, uh, theologically speaking, it is the most important day. It's the day that Jesus has risen from the dead. I thought uh, that I would do a Good Friday service and then I uh, quickly dismissed that, uh, believing that we've been in a Good Friday mode a mournful time for a long time and we need something uplifting. We don't need any mournful songs and dark scripture readings. So we're glad that you can be with us and if you can share this service with anybody who needs an uplifting message, uh, please do so. Uh, Diane Bickle has returned from the uh, hospital. We are extremely grateful for that and best wishes to her. And happy birthday to uh, Jens Peterson, Bernie Flynn and Sharon Pepin. I think that's it. Let's, uh, at this time, I'm going to ask the children to come up for the children's opening. Come on down. Glad you could be with us today. I'm just uh, visualizing that there's 25 kids up here at the front of the church. And when you look at the front of the church this morning, it looks quite different. Uh, the white, uh, the white stole, the white pyramids, uh, all the flowers and uh, butterflies uh, on the wall up in the front, the balloons, and uh, Easter eggs. And we even have a rainbow as uh, one of the balloons. And let me explain uh, a couple of these uh, symbols that we have. Uh, Easter eggs uh, are symbolic for a couple of reasons. Every other food that you boil gets soft when it's boiled except for the egg. When the egg is boiled, it gets harder. And uh, the Jewish people believed that in their times of suffering, and they went through lots of suffering, uh, years and years, decades of suffering, but they believed it was part of their tradition that the more suffering we experience, the stronger our faith becomes. And to me, that is a, an awesome symbol. And the other reason the egg is a symbol is that new life breaks out of the shell. Just as Jesus broke out of the grave and resurrected from the dead, so we have reminders all through nature of new life. The same with the butterfly. Beautiful symbol. Comes out of the cocoon, the caterpillar, and it bursts into new life. This spring, when you're outside, look for new life. Everywhere you look, whether it's uh, baby geese uh, following their mothers or uh, uh, flowers blooming, all around us there's new life. And we need to see, we need to believe in new life. It's a very powerful message that our heart needs to hear. God bless you, and uh, let us go forth with new life.
risen indeed. Alleluia. The gospel reading for today is the 16th chapter of Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for, for, for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, be with us this morning as we are gathered in your name, and bless both the preaching and the hearing of your word. Amen. In my Monday Thursday service the other night, I talked about something new, the new covenant that Jesus sealed uh, at the time of uh, the Lord's Supper. It was during the Passover meal, and uh, it fulfilled the promise that God had made in Jeremiah chapter 31, that he's going to establish a new covenant. And again this morning, there is something new. There's something new about one of the most profoundly devastating things that we face in our lives, and that is death. This is something new. What happened on Easter Sunday, when the women went to the tomb and they found that the tomb was empty, and the angel said, he has risen from the dead. Something new. We need something new and powerful in our lives. I'm going to talk about three things that I think uh, could be something new in our lives and will help to transform and change our lives. One is the way we see our families. I deal with family conflict and family crisis all of the time, and uh, I I deal with, with people from all over who are in this kind of situation. And what I tell them, when I, after I hear the stories about the conflict, I suggest to them that they try to look at the family member and at the situation with new eyes. I'm a, uh, a uh, follower of the, uh, the uh, series on TV, where uh, murder series, and and uh, forensic files and things like that. And oftentimes a case is 20 or 25 years old. And then they hand the file over to new eyes for somebody to see it in a different way. And when our family is in crisis, that's what we're required to do, to look at the person and to look at the situation with new eyes and to try to understand why we have got into this conflict. And what role have I played in this conflict? And to see this person in a different light. Often when we have children, we begin to form an opinion and a judgment about them from the time they're this high. And that judgment and that opinion about them continues as they grow, grow older. Look upon them with new eyes. See them in a new light. Try to understand why they are the way they are and see the pain that might be in their hearts. Something new. If the old way of trying to resolve conflicts isn't working, it's time to start and try something new. Something that uh, I've been thinking about quite a bit uh, lately is... Uh, the idea of racism in our society. And racism makes most 
white people feel very uncomfortable. They don't want to talk about it. When they see things happening, protests happening on television, it makes them feel uncomfortable and they don't understand it. The truth is this, is that if you are white Canadian, you truly don't understand what people who aren't white go through in their lives. What First Nations people go through. And now Asian people. You see on TV how indiscriminately Asian people are being beat up or yelled at or screamed at indiscriminately for no reason at all except for racism that is in people's hearts. And black people in the States, there's a huge trial going on now. Unless you walk in their shoes, you cannot truly understand the hurt and pain that they're carrying. It's time for us to look at their situation with new eyes. Try to understand what they're feeling. Be empathetic and sympathetic to what's going on in their lives. And then the reason we're here today to celebrate the new life that Jesus gave us through the resurrection. And unfortunately, this happened 2,000 years ago, but death seems to hold that bitter sting that it held thousands of years ago for most people. It's time for our whole culture and society to see death with new eyes and to truly lift up the power of the resurrection and realize that we, when we are in the process of death, and actually we all are at every stage of our life, but as we draw closer to that moment, it's not a time to despair. It's not a time to be sad. It's not a time for us to give up. It's a time to realize that this is a new chapter that's coming in our life. It's a new book that is opening, a new journey, and not everybody that's with us here can go with us at this time, but it's a very exciting, exhilarating journey that we will be on. New life, a new way to see things. That's what Easter is all about. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
And uh, our prayers go out to them and for all of us uh, to reach out in compassion. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages, people of every race and religion. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying and those who grieve, especially they, those that we name out loud, Richard, Alvin, Darlin, Gordon, Ruth, Grant, Diane, Richard, Diane, and Matt Cardinal, assure them of your promises. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In the hope of the new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive now the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.